Oh, good. That's good progress. So if this is two volts, what would this be? So now we have another loop where 2 plus 8 plus 10, the voltage drops, equals the voltage source. Okay. This is what we could call a node. A node is a point where we have more than one path conversion. What's the total amount of current coming into this node? What's the total amount of current going through this point? Um, 15 amps. And how much current is going through this point? 10. And through this point? 5. Good. All right, well, now we're ready to state Kirchhoff's laws. So you might have heard your instructor talking about these in lecture, Kirchhoff's laws. Now, Kirchhoff's laws are basically just kind of the common sense of our ski lift analogy using thinking of voltage change in terms of height and amps in terms of coulombs per second. So one of Kirchhoff's laws says the sum of the voltage sources around any loop equals the sum of the voltage drops. One of Kirchhoff's laws is around any loop, the sum of the voltage sources equals the sum of the voltage drops. Around any loop, the sum of the voltage sources equals the sum of the voltage drops. That's one of Kirchhoff's laws. sum of the voltage sources equals the sum of the voltage drops. Now, if we remember that we're thinking of voltage as a change in height, that should really just be common sense. If you're going through a loop, you have to end up at the same height that you started at. The whole definition of a loop is that you end up at your starting position. Um, if we draw a loop, we have to come back to where we started. Well, that means that the total amount of height that you gain has to be canceled by the total amount of height that you lose. Otherwise, you can't really end up back where you started at. Well, that's why the sum of the voltage sources has to equal the sum of the voltage drops. That just means that the sum of the gains in height has to equal the sum of the losses in height. Well, you use that many times when you're working out this circuit. You remember, for example, that when we go through this path, the sum of the voltage drops across the resistor had to equal the gain from the voltage drop from the battery. Now, another Kirchhoff's law is about current. It says that the total amount of current coming into a node, the sum of the current coming into a node equals the sum of the current going out of a node. The other Kirchhoff's law is that the sum of the current going into a node equals the sum of the current going out of a node. Or the sum of the current going into a point equals the sum of the current going out of a point. Well, again, that just makes sense in terms of our ski lift analogy. If 15 skiers per second are approaching this point, then 15 skiers per second have to go away from this point. Um, that means that if five of them are going down here, the other 10 have to go here. So the sum of the current coming into here is 15, and the sum of the current going out from this point is also 15. So Kirchhoff's law says that the sum of the current going into a point has to equal the sum of the current going out of a point. And again, that's really common sense if we think of this like skiers per second, or maybe even better if we think of it like liters of water per second. If 15 liters of water per second were coming into this point, that would push aside 15 liters per second out of it. That doesn't mean that 15 liters per second has to go through every path that's heading out, but that the sum of the paths out has to be 15. Has to be 15. So that's the other Kirchhoff's law. The sum of the current into a point has to equal the sum of the current out of a point. Because the current can't bunch up. That's kind of something we've been assuming all along. We've been assuming that, say, the skiers can't bunch up, or the, uh, the current can't bunch up. So a certain amount is coming into a point, that same amount has to move out from that point to make room. In all the problems that we're doing, we're assuming a kind of steady state where the, the current um, is not bunching up or, or uh, spreading out. All right, well, it's, it's good to know about those two Kirchhoff's laws, but again, I would encourage you not to try to rely on those too much for problems, but just to think about it in terms of the intuition that we've got. Change in voltage is like change in height, and current is like skiers per second, or liters of water per second. By the way, um, this is the kind of framework that's good to use for these types of problems. Make a great big picture where there's plenty of room around each device, and then write the relevant numbers next to each device. 
So make sure you have enough room so you can put all the relevant numbers next to each device. And a good way to keep track of them is to write them with the units. One thing I usually don't do is I don't usually say this is the voltage and this is the current. This is the current and this is the voltage, just because um, it just makes things more cluttered. If we just write down the units, then we know what everything is standing for um, without having to also write down what the concept is. Let's think a little bit more now about resistors. A resistor is a device which resists the flow of current. A resistor is a device which resists the flow of current. So every resistor is characterized by what we could call its resistance. So now we have another new concept, resistance. And the symbol for resistance is capital R. Symbol for resistance is capital R. And the unit for resistance is the ohm. So it's a kind of weird Greek symbol. This is the ohm. This is another unit and concept that's important to memorize the key ideas. This is a scalar. Everything we're talking about, um, all the new concepts we're introducing today will be scalars. This tells us how much resistance the resistor puts up. for resistors. The key equation for resistors is Ohm's law, V equals I times R. What does I stand for? Current. Yeah, current through the resistor. What does V stand for? Well, that's the voltage change, or the voltage drop, because resistors are voltage drops. Now, it would really be best to write this like this because this is the change in the voltage when we move through the resistor. But the, the, the truth is that at this point in physics, people always get lazy and they stop putting in delta. We talked about this a little bit last week. Remember that almost all applications are actually about voltage changes and not about the absolute level of the voltage. So people tend to use V when they really mean delta V. So maybe I'll do the same thing. But we have to remember this really means the voltage change or the, um, yeah, the voltage difference. This is our key equation for resistors. So this tells us that there are three key variables for resistors, V, I, and R. Remember in our previous pictures, we kept writing down numbers next to the, the symbols, but previously we'd only been writing down two numbers, voltage drop and current. Well, from now on, we're usually going to try to write down three numbers, voltage, current, and resistance. And we're going to try to use some of these numbers to figure out the other numbers. How many numbers do we write down about the battery? Well, just two, voltage and current. Uh, I, I, we generally are not going to write down a resistance for the battery because we're going to be assuming ideal batteries that don't really have any resistance. So if you have an ideal battery, this doesn't have a resistance. Sometimes people say that the battery perceives the resistance in the circuit, but I think it's clearer just to say that this doesn't have a resistance. 